So this is a Swift Conqueror 560, just going to take you around the van and show you how it operates. In front of the van you've got your jockey wheel, hitch and handbrake. Uh, obviously these will be the same as your previous caravan, the same as the gas bottle tie downs in the front of the van. On the A-frame you have got the ATC. The ATC light needs to be green before you tow and if there's an issue it will flash red. Normally you can reset it by disconnecting the, uh, the supply from the car and then reconnect it to the caravan, uh, reconnect it to the car again if there is an issue. All the heating fluid, very simply there to allow the heating system to breathe. Don't need to do anything with it, there's no cover on this particular van for the heating system, uh, but don't ever cover it up while it's in use. Then you've got your wind down legs on either side of the front, and they are just there to stabilise the caravan, they are not there to lift the caravan. You've then got your water pump connection, push it into the side of the van and lock the water connection into place. Um, then you'll drop that inside your rack roll like you've done with your previous van. As you can see, we've put your battery on board the van so it's ready to go for when the uh, when the caravan's delivered to you, and then you've got your main, uh, then you've got mains power coming to the caravan from the power power supply on site. In there, you've also got your motor mover power switch as well. Turn the key on, engage the motor mover, put the bar on, and engage it over. Press the two green buttons on the controller, release the handbrake, then you'll be able to use the buttons backwards, forwards, and turns on the controller itself. Motor mover and wheel nuts. Motor mover, like I said, engagement bar on, lock it into place, turn the power on in the locker with the red key that's just behind the power uh, behind the power cable, and then you'll be able to turn the controller on with the two green buttons. Toilet flush tank, open this up and you'll put three and a half litres of water in here and a cap full of the pink fluid prior to use. And then in the bottom here you have your toilet waste cassette. Pull up the orange handle to release the cassette, pull the cassette towards you. There's a neck on the front that turns out 90 degrees to tip the waste away. And there's a pressure relief button on the back of the cassette so when you're tipping the waste away it doesn't spit and splatter back at you. In this cassette you'll need to put one litre of water and a cap full of the blue fluid prior to use. On the back of the van you've got the two wind down legs to stabilise the caravan while it is in use. Coming down the side of the van, you've got your two fridge vents. Two fridge vents are very simply there to allow the fridge system to breathe. You don't need to, you won't ever cover these up at all um, when the van's in use, as it can create too much heat behind the fridge, and the fridge will not operate at the right temperature. Also, during the summer, if it's extremely hot, the fridge will not get down as cold as what it normally would. 230 volt socket on the outside of the van, so you can have power out to your awning. Storage locker for underneath the front seating area and the barbecue gas point. Coming onto the inside of the van now, got your main control, pa main control panel, power on and off just here on the bottom right hand side. I do apologise the camera's not clearing up very well there. Power on and off on this button here. You've then got your awning light for the outside of the caravan. You've got your dimming lights for above the cabinet there which you can adjust the brightness of on this arrow here when it says dim level at the bottom. You've then got your interior lights. And if they're all turned on, they'll all come on at the same time. And then you've got your water pump run. And on the screen, you can see you've got your battery voltage on the screen just here. Next to that, you've got your Audi control panel. And I'll come back to this in a second. Just going to turn this off for a minute. Then I'll show you how to turn it all on. To fill the water system up, you need to open all the taps up on the hot side of the water system. As you can see, the water system has been left full. So all open on the hot side of the water system. Same in the bathroom and the same with the shower. You're then going to come underneath the seat on the front right hand side with your acro connected on the outside and you're going to be looking for the yellow drain valve. With that valve flat with the floor as it is at the moment it will allow you to fill the water system up. If that valve is upright and pointing towards the bottom of the seat it will drain the water system down. So once you've got that valve in the position it's in now, I'm actually just going to open that so it drains the system down when it's delivered to you. So once that valve's open, uh, in the flat position Come over to the control panel by the door, turn the water pump on, and once the water system's full, you'll have water running out of every tap continually on board the caravan. Once the system's full, you can shut all, and once you've got water running out of every tap continuously, you can shut all of the taps back off, and that is your system full, and you can start thinking about warming the water on board the van. I'm just going to turn that off now, because we've got no water in the system. So, we come to the Audi control panel, as I said, so we're going to turn this control panel on, with the power button on the bottom left hand side. Hit the menu button and it will take you into the home screen. Top left hand side here, here indicates we've got the heating pump running. Top right hand side indicates we've got mains power coming to the caravan and to the Audi control panel. And then below that, you've got your internal temperature for the caravan. Hit the menu button, you've got minus or plus to set your room temperature. 
Below that, you've got your water temperature, so it's currently off. So you've got either hot water on or hot water boost, depending on if you want to shower on board the van. Below that, you have the amount of power coming into the caravan from the caravan site you're on. Now, this is only relevant to the heating and hot water system. So you've got one, two, or three kilowatts, depending on what caravan site you're on. Bottom left-hand side, you've got the option to run gas. You'll simply hit the gas option. It will self-ignite on gas if the gas is turned on and connected. And if it fails to ignite, you'll get gas fail at the bottom of the screen and two exclamation marks if it has failed. Down in the bottom right-hand side, you've got the advanced settings for the heating and hot water system. For these, we do advise you read the manual that comes with the caravan. And to turn the control panel off, just hit the power button and it will isolate itself. If for any reason you're not getting power through to the control panel and it's not coming on, you may just need to come underneath the seat. And at the back there, just, just here, you'll see you've got two switches. One for the heating and hot water and one for the charger, just here. So you need to make sure both of them lights are on for the heating and the charge system to work. Next up, we're gonna to come to the fridge. The fridge is very straightforward to use. You've got power on, on the control button just here. So as you can see, we've got mains power, and then you can control the temperature of the fridge with the button on the right-hand side here, the thermometer button. The more amount of dots you've got lit up, the colder the fridge will be. Hit the arrow button again, and it will take you across to your 12 volt option. Now the 12 volt mode is for when you are towing down the road. It will not work off the 12 volt battery on board the caravan. Hit the arrow button again, and it is the gas mode. It will self ignite on gas for the fridge. If it fails to ignite on gas for the fridge, it'll actually bring up a warning light like it did with the 12 volt to let you know it's not getting a, <coughs> to let you know it's not getting a power supply but it will just let you know that it has failed to ignite on gas. If you need it to try and reignite on gas, I suggest you go over to the next mode across and hit the button again until you go back to your gas option. To turn the fridge off, press and hold the power button and it will isolate the power to the fridge. Microwave, hob, grill and oven all work very much like your household appliances. No difference at all there. Shower again and the sinks all work like household appliances, just open the taps. We do advise during the winter though, that when you have drained the system down, open all the taps up in the central position between the hot and the cold, and it will allow any air that's in the system or any water that's in the system, if it does start freezing, to move about in the pipe work instead of sitting still and cracking the pipe work open. So essentially allow it to expand. Same with the shower, and I do also recommend that you take the shower head off as well. Bedroom, very simple, the bed lifts up. Um, so you can access the storage underneath and in one of the cupboards at the back here you will also see the Aldi heating and hot water tank as long, it is, as long as it is just above the minimum the system is okay to be run it's when it drops below the minimum that you need to top up the antifreeze uh, for the Aldi heating and hot water system and for that just give us a call and we'll advise of what fluid to use Obviously all light switches around the caravan, you'll see them as you go around the van. But you've got different options of the light switches as you go around. So as you can see, these ones for instance, or well, this one here, does the lights above the cabinets. Then in the bathroom, you've got the toilet flush, so you've got the electric flush here on the toilet. You've got the toilet full indicator light, which will illuminate red when the toilet waste set is completely full. The toilet seat itself turns for your convenience, as you can see. However, when you are removing the toilet waste cassette from underneath the caravan, you need to make sure this toilet is pointing straight on. The reason being is it will lock the cassette in place if not. Then below the toilet, you have the grey waste handle. You need to push this into the open position to allow the waste into the cassette and have it in the closed position when you're not using the toilet. You'll also need it in this closed position when you are removing the toilet cassette from the side of the van. So that is a Swift Conqueror. Uh, 580. If you have any further questions on the caravan, please don't hesitate to give us a call here at the Caravan Company and we'd be more than happy to help. We appreciate your business and we look forward to seeing you here on site soon again. Thanks for now. Bye bye.